श्री गुरु वैष्णव गुरु परंपरा की जाय ग्रंथरा श्रीमद भागवत की जाय गौर भक्त वृंद की गौर प्रेम आनंद बोलो हरि बो प्रेम सो वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग आवर डिस्कशन ऑन द चतुर श्लोकी ऑफ श्रीमद भागवत and tonight we come to the second of krishna's two introductory verses in which he summarizes that which will be taught in the four verses of the chatur shloka soon to appear on the screen so 932 second chapter second canto excuse me ninth chapter verse 32 krishna says yavana ham hmm? yatha bhavo yad rupa guna karmaka tathaiva tattva vigyanam astu me maranugrahat he says brahma yavan aham all of me it have how my very existence includes my very intentions desires yad rupa guna karma ka my form my qualities my leelas tataiva tatpa vigyanam astu me astu me astu te madanugrahat out of great mercy for you i bestow all this realization of all this upon you nothing i'm holding back from you everything i'm giving to you out of my mercy So as they say this is the second of the two introductory verses which he more or less tell gives a prelude of what he is going to say and here the emphasis among other things tonight is on the fact that bhakti which he's bestowing upon him the form of sadhana bhakti and by which he obtained prem bhakti this is a gracious gift so it's not a right it's not something to be earned on the strength of our own power prowess hmm proper like to describe it as a as the uh, avaroha pantha uh, a descending path hmm? so if krishna wants us to know then we can know and know what all these things about himself hmm and uh as they say if he wants us to know we can know and know in un, no uncertain measure that is the emphasis here and we'll go on to describe that but again it's important first to emphasize the fact that bhakti is uh, the grace of bhagwan if we were able to by some other method to remove all of the superficial covering of the jiva that has the the atma in pursuit of things that are here today and gone tomorrow and preoccupied with the temporal and so forth although the jiva the atma itself is is internal hmm? this is obviously not a wise uh, proposal but this is the state of affairs if we were to remove the covering that caused us us to be preoccupied with things that are just uh momentary we're preoccupied with them uh, in our waking state much more than we are preoccupied with that which we experience in the dream state and why hm largely because as as a general rule and there are exceptions the things in the dream state are very temporary and very uh fantastic uh they are not things that are possible in the waking state probably used to like to say 
in the waking state you can see gold and you can see a mountain. But in the dream you can see a golden mountain. Mm -hmm. Many possibilities in, the, in, the, in mind stuff, if you will, in the realm of mind, which is not, in our consideration, synonymous with the brain by any measure. Hmm? That's a big topic, of course, but um, relative to the point here and the here and now, the things that appear in the mind in dreams, they come very quickly and they disappear very quickly, and that's one of the reasons we don't give them as much credence. Hmm? They're not as enduring. Hmm? But the fact of the matter is that that which we are preoccupied with in the waking state, while enduring a little longer, is momentary hmm? from the broader uh, pers perspective. Hmm? So, this, if we were able to remove the covering that causes us an, an enduring unit of consciousness, experiential um, existence, a unit of experiential existence, preoccupied with non-experiential existence in pursuit of experience. This is another way of thinking about it. This is not a very wise proposal. In other words, we're a unit of experience, and so we, we seek experience. We seek it in relation to non-experiencing manifestations of existence, matter. Hmm? Not much to be gotten out of that. The experience is limited at best hmm? and confusing. So if we're able to remove the confusion that has us so preoccupied and so preoccupied hmm, with that coming and going of, the th of things, hmm, with that non-experiential form of existence, matter and all its shapes, and so forth, so preoccupied with it, some of us are, that we even reason away the, the fact that we are a unit of experience. Hmm? We, make, we philosophize and make less out of experience than the non-experiencing side of, of life. This is very, a very backwards idea and largely the condition we find the modern society in. Hmm? Confused about consciousness. Hmm? So, at any rate, if we were to remove that confusion from the Vedantic point of view, hmm, what would we have? Hmm? We would have an enduring unit of experience, hmm? but we would not have bhakti. Hmm? Bhakti, this is the point, is a gift. That's a grace. At the same time, the bhakti I'm not saying that bhakti is something that is entirely foreign to us, like matter. It's foreign to us. Here in this confused condition, we're like a fish out of the water. Hmm? Again, we're a unit of experiential, experiential reality, and we're uh, involved uh, intimately uh, with non-experiencing reality. Hmm? Hmm. Uh. So, anyway, if we were to remove that confusion, hmm, uh, it's not that we'd have bhakti, but I don't mean to say that the bhakti is different from us in the way that matter is different from us. It's non-experiential. We are experiential. Its forms are non-enduring. We are an enduring unit of experiential reality. Hmm? So we are very different from matter. Again, like a fish out of water, to use a simple example. And while bhakti is, is, is not our right, hmm, it is our dharma in the sense of our nature as, an ent as a dependent entity to serve. The dharma of the, of the atma is that it, it's, dep it's dependent it's it's dependent in its 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 ananda. It's dependent in its sat. It's dependent in its chit. Hmm? Unlike Bhagawan, hmm?
the dependent nature of the jiva, and the, the implication is that it, that that is that it it is it it's it's not the center. Hmm? It's the circumference. Let's say the circumference has to serve the center. As long as the center is in place, there's a, then there's a circumference. <laughs> so uh, the the self is described as a unit of well, serving nature, dependent, hmm? um, dedicating in its nature. So we, in a sense, dedicate ourself, but in largely in relation uh, to matter. We can dedicate ourself to ourself, but that's uh, limited. What you can, how you can dedicate to um, uh, a. a, a I want to say, without reposing the dedication in something, hmm? this is the swasukha of Sukadev. Hmm? He, he tasted his own bliss, the bliss of the self. I want to say it's objectless bliss. Hmm? Bhakti provides an object for us, but what is the nature of that object? Very different than the objects of the material world. It's an object in a sense. But in another sense, it's it's as much as we are a subject, and subjective. It is the super subject, super subjective. That's why I like to call it a significant consciousness other. Hmm? We can repose our serving capacity in, and by in do, in doing so, when that opportunity presents itself, by the grace of Bhagwan, we're not in an artificial position, like we are when we're dedicating ourselves to in the, in the chase for things. Chase for ourself, confused to, by, by thinking that it lies in in things that we've invested ourselves in. So, why? Because why is this the, the, the Bhagwan is, is and Bhakti are the nature of consciousness, like ourselves, not like matter. Hmm? And at close examination, we find that why the self is an object of love. Hmm. The self that we love when the self is invested in the thing, we love the thing, as I've often explained. So it's the self that we love. It's an object of love. Why? It's an object of ananda, means love, bliss, because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's both a shakti of Bhagwan, tatasta shakti, an energy of Bhagwan, and it's amsa, vibhinamsa, He is Swamsa, hmm? we are Vibhinamsa. That's when we say Vibhinamsa, we mean part and parcel, he used Prabhupada's language hmm? of Bhagwan. Hmm? And so we look close at ourselves, we find we are not independent, we're a dependent entity, we have a source, so we have a connection with that source, inherently, hmm? kind of metaphysically. Ontologically speaking, we, we are a dependent entity, so that means there's an entity that we're dependent upon. Hmm? That's Bhagwan. But that relationship with Bhagwan that constitutes bhakti, nonetheless, has yet to has yet to uh, arise. Hmm? Sometimes it's described. In fact, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu described it Sanatana Goswami as an inheritance, something that's there waiting, waiting your wealth, your prospect, all that you can be. But certain things have to be in place in order for that to manifest. Just like you could have a you could have an inheritance and not know about it. Hmm? And this is the story in, in, in we find in Chaitanya Charitamrita that Mahaprabhu tells to Sanatan Goswami hmm? in Sanatan Siksha, giving the Siksha that Sanatan then gave to us came from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, among other things, many things. He said, Bhakti is like this. It's your wealth. It's your inheritance. There was a fellow, he was very poor. He went to the astrologer to see if there was any prospect for him in his life, and the astrologer said, you're not poor at all. Hmm? Look at your chart. You're a very wealthy person. You have an inheritance. It's been left for you over here. Hmm? He said, don't look in the north. Don't look in the south. Don't look in the west. Don't look towards yoga, gyan, karma. Hmm? That would only be troublesome. Hmm? Look in the east. This is the direction of the gods. Hmm? Uh, take and, and to, to 
to, bhak, to bhakti. And by bhakti, that relationship will be established. And that bhakti is made available hmm, by Krishna through Guru Parampara, through his descent at the different avatars, through his, the explanation of that in Revelation, for example, in Bhagavatam and so forth. Hmm? It's all uh, descending. So the initial, if you will, move <laughs> in this uh, love affair uh, in potential between the Jeeva and Bhagwan comes from Bhagwan. Hmm? He sends a note. That's Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm? Mm-hmm. These are these four verses. <laughs> Here's a note. You give it to Brahma and tell everybody else. Mm-hmm. All those jivas that you're about to manifest in different forms that all constitute some state of confusion and so forth. Here's a secret, a note. Hmm? Start a parampara, simple succession, Brahma. This is your real... Explain this. Hmm? So it comes from his side, is the point. Hmm? And gradually we, we catch up and, and, and follow and so forth. So bhakti is descending. It's a, it's a gracious grant. If we were to uncover the self from its confusion, it's not that there would be bhakti there, but there's potential for bhakti. And this is what is inherent in the jiva. The potential for bhakti, the very dharma of the self to serve if the opportunity comes to repose that in the perfect object of love, if he should make his appearance before us, if he should feel so inclined, he has to Brahma. Hmm? That becomes our good fortune. That is called Jadvicha, that is called Bhagyavan. Brahman the Brahmi Tekon, Bhagyavan Jeev, Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Latavij. So he wants to emphasize this point, the, the, the descending nature of bhakti. It's not something we can climb up and uh, uh, break down the doors, enter in with our shoes and so forth. This, and it's kind of rugged individuality of Western society and, and so forth. <laughs> That's not going to be too helpful in this. You could use that in the context of bhakti and be very fierce for bhakti's cause <laughs> and so forth and pushing the cause of bhakti. Hmm. But bhakti itself hmm, is initiated hmm, by Bhagavan, by the great. This is his Kripa Shakti through the Parampara. This is this, this, this indeed. Uh, he, what's implied here, of course, is I'm going to give you mercy, and the mercy is prem, and there's an anga of prem, like I mentioned the other day. That's called sadhana bhakti, hmm, made up of so many angas, a limb of the body of prem. Mm-hmm. and uh, I'm going to give these things to you. Mm-hmm. We say there's Kripa Siddha and Sadhana Siddha. Mm-hmm. Rupa Goswami is taught. There's, there's, there's perfection that can be attained by, by grace alone, or there's protect, perfection that can be attained by Sadhana. But at close examination, even the Sadhana and the opportunity for that is a grace. Mm-hmm. So well, as I like to say, we make an effort for grace. Mm-hmm. That is the Sadhana. Try to position ourselves in such a way that we'll be attracted to Bhagwan or, or uh, to his uh, devotees and so forth. So he made a strong point here. I'm going to, you're going to realize all these things about me by my grace, and it's going to take the form of sadhana bhakti first. And very, uh, of course, the principle of sadhana bhakti is this nam kirtan that we do. We brought it out the other night a little bit. Brahma had requested, previous to Krishna's responding at the end of his questions, that please make me, let me enter into a loving relationship and friendship with you. And in the course of my pursuit of, of, of that directly and that indirectly by way of carrying out your various orders and so forth with regard to the universe, let me not become proud. I have a big task. People think a lot of me and venerate me, and so forth. Uh, let me not become proud. So he made an arrangement to give him, a, to give him the, the opportunity to, to glance mm-hmm. at, at what that perfection of Sakiras is about in the Brahma Vimohan Leela. Mm-hmm. This is a very, very, very prominent Leela of, for Sakirasa. Mm-hmm. It's all... This is the beginning of cowherding. Mm-hmm. 
This is just at the Sesh Kumar Leela. The, the, the end of his, his Kumar Leela. This name Aga, 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 Aga Bida, uh, Agahara, uh, it, again and again it surfaces, and very much in, 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 with regard to Sakirasa. Hmm? We'll go into that a bit, but in brief, at first, we know that, uh, that after Krishna speaks these verses and all, there's much time that passes in, his, in Brahma's sadhana and, and uh, uh, carrying out the orders of his guru, Krishna, with regard to the creation and so forth. And in due course, as I say, he gets the darshan of the cowherds hmm? in the Brahma Vimohan Leela. Hmm? This is a huge... See what arrangement... What a big, what a big arrangement Krishna made for one, one jiva hmm? who had such a such a audacious desire. I want to be a friend, your friend. Of course, Krishna initiated it, hmm? reaching out to him, shaking his hand like a friend, hmm? and so forth. So he wanted to follow that opportunity that came to him, that window of opportunity. He understood it. He was smart. Hmm? With four heads. Ah, you're offering me the friendship. I want to take it. Hmm? So he, anyway, he, he made range his whole Brahma Mohan Leela from one perspective just for this one one Brahma, who's just one jiva. He seems like a big guy, but he's no bigger than an ant, really. Hmm? There's a jiva in the ant, and there's a jiva in the Brahma. Hmm? What is Brahma Samhita gives the, gives the, 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 um, the contrast between Indra and Indra Gopa. Yes, Indra Gopa, Matavendra Mahosa. <laughs> there's Indra, the chief of the gods, and there's the Indra Gopa, some kind of insect. Hmm? Atmos, same size <laughs> in each. Hmm? Hmm. These are just different material designations. So, he anyway, for this one tiny jiva, Brahma, he made this arrangement in his leela. While he's in the midst of his leela, absorbed with his friends, still he's thinking about those sadhakas hmm? who pray to him. We, I think we told her the night how Vishwana Chakrati Thakur, Thakur had posed in Raghavart Machandrika the, the question, well, if the Rag Bhaktas who want to attain Krishna in Golok, in, 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 in Gokul, in his coward Leela, where he doesn't even know that he's God, he's absorbed and uh, defined by their love. He's the friend, he's the son, he's the lover, and forgets that he's God. How will the Raganuga Sadhaka's prayers, and Brahma's a Raganuga Sadhaka here, how will his prayers be heard? By Krishna, who's forgetting himself hmm? in, 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 in madhurdi and sweetness. So he says, of course, well, it's, he, hasn't, he hasn't lost his position of omniscience. It's still there. It's, w- it's way in the background. That's true. It's still there. But it's there in the background enough to hear the prayers of the sadhakas. And apparently, we could say here, to some extent, those prayers may even inform the leela. Hmm? Then the whole Leela is created hmm? to show Brahma his prospect. Hmm? So many different ways to look at this. Hmm? How compassionate Krishna is for the sadhakas. Don't ever think your prayers will not go be heard by him. Hmm? Sincere, crying out to Krishna, this is, this is bhakti. That's all. Prabhupada was, Prabhupada was once asked, what about yoga? He said, yoga? We cry for Krishna, that's all. That's yoga. Hmm? Something like that. Hmm? So Krishna made arrangement. It took some time. Be patient. Brahma had a long, long life, and for one minute of his life, and he said that the one minute of Brahma on Earth is is a year of his time. Something like that. Or how does it work? Something. One minute here is a year of his time. Anyway, for one minute on Earth, and he saw. To see that for one minute, so profound, shook him to the very core of his being. What is this, Leela? I wanted this, and he's come before me. And then, the other side, so he gave him his prospect. He showed him, what, this is what you wanted. This is, what you, this is your future. Hmm? We have to know, as I often say, where we want to go and where we are. And there's usually a pretty big difference, distance between the two. Hmm? 
So we should focus on where we want to go in terms of where we are and what the next step to take is. Some theoretical understanding of that ideal and it is descending. Prem Bhakti is descending and how it will descend to the medium of sadhana. Therefore we say, if you want to sit a day, learn to engage, learn, learn to live in a sadhaka deha. You want to live in a siddhadeya, first learn to live in a sadhaka deha. Hmm? Sadhaka deha is the practitioner's body. Hmm? What we get from the guru, when we get, when he whispers in our ear, hmm? some unintelligible sounds. Hmm? <laughs> then uh, uh, we get a sadhaka deha. Hmm? We get it, but it has to grow. It has to develop. Hmm? And w- what is given in the seed there, that has to mature. Hmm? And so the sadhaka day is sometimes engaged in relation to material objects and sometimes in relation to spiritual objects. And we have to change the balance so that it's always in relation to spiritual objects. Hmm? This kind of absorption and so forth of the sadhaka day, that will cause the siddha day to descend, to arise as you like, hmm, to awaken. So we you want to live in a siddhadeya, you have to learn to live in a sadhakadeya first. Hmm? So, and that may take some time. So after a long time, Brahma got this darshan. Hmm? And then, of course, eh, ostensibly he made some offense, so he had to become a Muslim. Hmm? It means he asked for this kind of Sakya Prem, and he asked not to become proud. So Brahma has become an outcast. This is huge. <laughs> Krishna, make, you want to be humble, and you want to not be proud? I will take the Brahma, who's so prone position to pride, hmm, with all of his power, knowledge, and so forth, and turn him into an outcast. He's Vidhi. Brahma's another name is Vidhi. Vidhi means who follows all the rules very carefully. He's a very pukka uh, Hindu gentlemen, hmm? and now we become an outcast hmm? in Gaur Leela. Hmm? He, he, no, no, and how humble was Haridas Thakur? He would keep himself outside of the assembly of devotees. Mahaprabhu would have to drag him in and point him out. Hmm? He was not allowed to go in the temple of Jagannath. Hmm? Mahaprabhu would go daily to him hmm? to give him darshan. And had to point him out to others. Advaita, as I said the other night, pointed him out during the Shraddha ceremony, gave the prasad to, to him and so forth. Hmm? And with this kind of humility, Trinada Pisuni Chena, that Mahaprabhu mandated, he chanted the holy name and became successful. Hmm? Attained his ideal. Hmm? Took a long time. <laughs> Be patient, but uh, it, it, you, your prayers won't go... Uh, un, 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 unnoticed. So he did. Uh, he did his work of creation. Hmm? He did his sadhana bhakti. This is with feeling. We're talking about this with some feeling. We're talking about. You have to understand how to put these things together with some kind of feeling. Hmm? Don't think about it too much. Just feel it. Gaur Leela took him to Krishna Leela, and then the principal sadhana there. Is Namsan Kirtan. He was the example of that. Namacharya. Hmm? So, he gave his mercy. He said, I give you my mercy by which you will, will understand all the things that are mentioned here hmm, about me. And that mercy also takes the form, is the form of Prem Bhakti, but it comes to you, and it, that's the body of it, and it comes in a limb as Sadhana Bhakti. Hmm? And the, the principle anga, of the anga that is sadhana bhakti, that's made up of so many angas, so many limbs, is nam kirtan. Mm-hmm. And from nam, come guna. And from guna, comes rupa. From rupa comes guna, from guna come lila. And this is the progression. And this is mentioned here. Hmm? Hmm? Rupa, guna, karma, kaha, he says. Here, karma means activity, it means lila. Janma karma chame divyam evam yobeti tattvataha chakvadeham punarjan naiti mameti so arjuna. He says, 
my karma, my activities, my janma, my birth, divyam, janma karma, cha me divyam. He's saying, my, my birth, hmm, my action, hmm, is a manifestation of the unborn being born, hmm, and my actions are lila. Hmm. We hear the word, Krishna has no karma, but he has action, that action is lila. Hmm. He says, Rupa guna karma kaha. I give you sadhana. Do nam. Hmm? And pay attention. Nam smarnam. This is the job of Haridas Thakur. Brahma Haridas. He chanted 300,000 names. It took about 22 and a half hours a day. Hmm? I hear sometimes people say, how many rounds you're chanting? And how quickly? Hmm? And some people say, there's some mystic way that you can chant very quickly, so many rounds. Hmm? And it, when the mind is concentrated, the tongue is going very fast and, or silently and you can chant so many. It, so so in, in, in four hours, you can chant 64 rounds. Hmm? I've heard people from other sects talk like this. <laughs> well, Hari Das Thakur, the whole point of his 300,000 rounds, or names, three lakhs of rounds, was that it took him all the 24 hours of the day. Hmm? Not I would chant three hundred. I can chant three lakhs in eight hours. And then I, then I got another fourteen or what is it, sixteen, to do whatever. <laughs> no, <laughs> it means he was engaged all the time. Kirtaniya Sarahari. This kind of attentive chanting, then, this is we call Sankirtan. When when Haridastaka was chanted three lakhs means uh, sometimes it said he should one lakh, lakh means a hundred thousand that means uh, hmm. hundred thousand name means sixty four rounds around your beads so he's chanting one lakh out loud one lakh inaudibly whispering upamsa and one loud silent one 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 lakh silently one lakh of each. Hmm? The loud chanting, that is when nam smarnam, japa means smarnam, meditation, hmm, of nam. When done out loud, it becomes an anga of kirtan, a limb of kirtan. So, he chanted, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Other people were hearing and some benefit is there and so on and so forth. Hmm? And that may help to pay attention also. At any rate, hmm? the point is, we should do Nam Smarnam, or Mahaprabhu was also described as doing it as an Anga of, of Kirtan, when Rupa Goswami beautifully describes him, Rupsu, or I think Rupa or Sanatana Goswami, Chaitanyas Chaitanyastakam, going to Puri, walking from, from, from Nadia to Puri with a string around his neck of, of cloth with knots in it, and sing. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Hmm? Some people say, Gaudi people say, you should not chant the Hari Krishna mantra out loud. It is only for japa. Hmm? But Mahaprabhu's example contradicts this. Hmm? And also, it is the it, Kirtan is the Yuga Dharma. Hmm? And the Upanishad says, what? Iti Sodasakam Nam Nam. Sarva Veda Ishudvishate. All Veda say in Kali Yuga the Dharma is Nam Kirtan. What name? Narada asked Brahma. These sixteen names. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari, Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari Hari. For the Yuga Dharma, which is Kirtan. Hmm? Not Smarnam. Hmm? But we do Nam Smarnam. And Mahaprabhu has spoken very... What kind of smarnam is that? Nam nam akari bahuda nita sarva shaktis tatrarpita niyamita smaranena kala. What kind of smarnam is that? What kind of meditation is that? But there are no rules to. There are no regulations. Smarn requires some, some prerequisite, some regulation. You've got to sit in a certain direction, not too high, not too low. And so, but with nam smarnam, he said, hmm? there are no rules, there are no regulations. Hmm? Only one rule. Try to pay attention. Hmm? 
<laughs> and if you pay attention to this nam, you do nam smarnam. Nam smarnam means paying attention, because you really—that's why I say there's only one rule to the to the nam smarnam. You got to pay attention because if you don't pay attention, you're not doing smarnam. You could do kirtan and not pay attention. It's possible. You could sing in your mind. You could be over there, but you cannot focus the mind, which is smarnam, on nam and have the mind somewhere else. So if you want to do nam smarnam, you have to pay attention. As much as you are paying attention, you're doing nam smarnam. And as much as you do nam smarnam, rupa smarnam will come. Because inside the nam, if you pay attention, close attention, you find, what's in the name? Everything is there. They say, did you get his name? Did you get her name? Darn it. I could have had her. I could have got him. I could have, you know, we could have traced him out. Hmm? Nowadays, as you say, they, they have the name, the, the social security number, and they have identity theft. Your whole identity is stolen hmm? just because your name has been given out. And Bhagwan has given his name out. What's the implication of that? He's given his name. Hmm? He giving everything. Hmm? not from nam nam no. Name and the name, they're not different. What's in the name? What's in Krishna Nam? He's saying here, everything is in Krishna Nam. Hmm? If you concentrate very carefully, the form of Krishna, the Rupa, is inside the Nam. Hmm? And on your mind, in, on your eyes, you could say, on your eyes will come the Nam, will Rupa. You will see the deity and you will not see a statue. Sometimes Prabhupada would go. Be <laughs> <laughs> For the deity, <laughs> like this, hmm? with your eyes you will see. Hmm? This is the vigraha. This is the form of Bhagwan. Hmm? Name is more merciful than the form, because name comes to you even before you can get the mantra to worship the form ent entirely and do the seva puja and so forth. Hmm? You're supposed to have been able to concentrate, so that now you know that the form. <laughs> Is real, and now you really want to serve. Mm -hmm. So you want all the ingredients and necessary paraphernalia for doing so: the mantra and the and learn the ritual and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So uh, you will see the form in this way, and then with rup smarnam mm -hmm. and nam smarnam, again continuing nam smarnam, rup smarnam will come. Mm -hmm. So when you do kirtan, for example, before the deity. Hmm. You'll see. Hmm. You'll see. Oh, yeah, yeah. the lamp is shining, it's showing his form. You see, you see something you cannot, difficult to take your eyes from. Premanjana Churita Bhakti Bilochanena. Seeing with the eyes of love, this come from Nam Smarnam. We'll cleanse the heart. Other desires will go away. Now you have capacity to see with new eyes. And inside Nam is not only Rupa. But guna. Then the guna will come on your mind. Hmm? And certain qualities of Bhagavan will appear relative to the kind of relationship through Nam, Kirtan, that's being cultivated. For Brahmat was Sakirasa. Hmm? He would hurry us chanting. Suvesha Sarvasa Lakshan. Uh, lakshito uh, uh, balenambara vividad bhuta bhashavid pavaduka supanditaha pratibimbitaha hmm? priyambara all these qualities hmm? these are qualities of the, the sakyarasa devotees like in Krishna, like in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Krishna's 64 qualities are mentioned. He has more, but 64 are highlighted. Certain ones of them, they will appear. They will see the form of Krishna and then the, in a particular way and see these qualities. Hmm? Suvesha. Oh, he's such a meticulous dresser. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Although he's a coward. Hmm? Just see, when he went to chastise Kaliya in the lake, that snake, and he jumped up on his head. He tightened his belt and pressed <laughs> himself like this. 
He's a meticulous dresser. Suvesha. Hmm? Sarvalaksha. <laughs> he has all means he has all wonderful qualities. Hmm? Balidam Bara. He, he Balidam Bara. He's the Bara. The the most, the best of the strong. Hmm? And they're all they helping him, but they think, you know, he's pretty strong. <laughs> he's he's holding with it. He might need help. I mean it's the hill, but I mean he's he got it started. Hmm? <laughs> He's pretty strong, lifting over the hill. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, he has. He he knows all languages. Hmm? Hmm? Baba Duke. He speaks very, very pleasingly. Uh, even the language of the animals, trees. He talks with them. <laughs> he has uh, Supandita. He knows about everything. You could sit down with him and just. Anything. Talk about it. He knows about it. <laughs> what, a, what a charming person. Hmm? Priyambod. His speech is very, very charming. Even when he speaks to an, somebody who's a, an enemy, he's able to charm them. Hmm? They go, man, this, you're a nice guy. I hate you, but you're a certainly a nice guy. That's incredible. <laughs> okay. Very charming. Hmm? Pretty bimbito means that, uh, he, that he... He's an expert, uh, much about talking, con- conversationalist. Hmm? Never an awkward moment with him in the room, hmm? in the conversation. Always keep can keep it going. <laughs> so many nice qualities. Huh? Suki, he's joyful, happy, always happy. Hmm? So certain qualities for Vatsalya rasa, certain qualities for Vatsalya, bak- bak- Sakya rasa, uh, certain qualities for Madhuya rasa. Hmm? And a certain form of Bhagwan, hmm? coming out of the name, hmm? and where we get the name usually will have something to do with that. Hmm? Krishna got Brahma got from Krishna, hmm? and he got the offer for Sakirasa. No. No. Here it is said uh, that uh, hey, uh, from Nam, Guna, Rupa. Rupa, guna in the mind. Hmm? The mind will explode with all these wonderful qualities, looking at the form of the Lord and kirtan going on. Hmm? Kirtan going on, and eyes are glued, and all these qualities are exploding in the mind. He like this. I can, he said, oh, I'm seeing these qualities in the mind. And then, lila, karma causes, in the heart, hmm? will manifest. Krishna is saying, this is how it will work for you. I give you my mercy. This will happen to you. This is exciting. You should sit and do japa and think, this is, this, all these possibilities are here. Hmm? This is incredible. <laughs> I got these beads and this is it's just, you know, some wooden beads from, a, from some sacred basil. I thought basil was for pizza or, you know, but here I got <laughs> beads and simple beads and this 16... Syllable or thirty-two syllables, sixteen words, three names, and what can be found in that? What a treasure coming from Guru Parampara. This is descending. It doesn't look like much, hmm? small thing, but big power it has, big potential it has. We should try to do job, but with this in mind, all these things happen to Brahma, happen to so many. Do it. Okay, this will happen to me. It may take some time, but wow, that's worth waiting for. Hmm? What else out there is more ex- <laughs> exciting prospect uh, than this? Hmm? So we hear properly to give attention to this chanting. See how Brahma paid attention as, as Haridas, Brahma Haridas. Hmm? And all the leelas. And leelas, what kind of leelas? Hmm? Like this Agas or leela? Hmm? This leela is very relevant to the cowherds and Sakyarasa. It takes place in the Seish. As I said earlier, Seish Kumar. And Seish Kumar means the end of the Kumar Leela. And it, he's starting to become a ca- now a calf herder. So he's going out with the young boys and the calves, and they're in the midst of a wonderful pastime. And boom, the whole thing explodes with uh, the, the um, killing of Agasur and then the Brahma coming, and, and the boys are removed for one, for one year. They, they become unmanifest in the, in the, in the, in the Leela. And so this has a powerful impact on them when they all manifest again. Hmm? 
Krishna's ages, the normal um, progression through the ages, Kumar, Pogonda, Kishoris, up to five years is the Kumar of a person or of Krishna in Krishna Lila. Then Pogonda means boyhood from five to ten, and then you enter into Kishore, adolescence, up to about sixteen. Hmm? And then then you become a young man or a young lady. You know the magazine seventeen. You've, you, I guess you've arrived at that time. <laughs> so uh, Krishna doesn't. Krishna Lila in in Vrindavan doesn't go into that magazine. Hmm? <laughs> he stays only adolescent. Hmm? Hmm? He's sweet sixteen. That's right. You got it. Hmm? Sweet sixteen, and as sixteen, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari 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 Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, very sweet. Hmm? Sweet sixteen. Hmm? Kishore, in the Kishore, in the Kishore Leela, of course, the Kumar Leela is there in it. The Kumar, Kumar form is within it. And the Poganda form is there. The Kumar form will be very attractive to those in Vatsalya Rasa who love Krishna as a, as a, as a child. The, the coward would like him as, in his Poganda Leela hmm? as, a, as, a, as a young boy. And the, the, the milk maidens, they will like him in his adolescent Leela. But they will also all like him in his adolescent Leela because. In his adolescent Leela of Kishore, the Kumar and the Poganda are also there. Hmm? Hmm. So this is the most perfect form of Krishna at Sweet Sixteen. And so, hmm, this Brahma Vivoan Leela, very, very, this is very, very prominent uh, in, in, in Sakyarasa. As I said earlier, uh, maybe a few days back, Prabhupada left the world immersed in this Leela. Hmm? Sukadev says, Krita Punja Punja, what is this Leela? Mm, these boys, he passed out to think of them. What have they done to have this kind of association with Krishna, that they could be so intimate with him? This is very extraordinary. Hmm? It's had a huge impact on the cowards. Krishna showed the measure of his love for him in this by manifesting, in one sense, himself, manifesting himself as all the cowards. Hmm? Showed, as I said, how much he knew their heart, how intimate their association really was. So you'll find beautiful descriptions with regard to Krishna's form and qualities and and uh, his friends and so forth, and Sakyaras, often this name Aga, Aga Bida, Aga Hara, hmm, is used. When it's the, when it, the, the cowards, they sing, Ah, in the beautiful form of Krishna, hmm, he comes. Just see him coming from the cow pen, hmm, shining black like a, like, like a dark, like a blue sapphire, hmm, his teeth white like the Kunda flower, Hmm? His dress like the brilliant golden ketaki hmm? flower. Hmm? A wild garland of wild flowers on, on his chest, dancing, hmm? very charming to us, this killer of Aga. Hmm? So many prayers like this. Uh, and Brahma is where he's going hmm? through his sadhana. So when he comes to Leela, these kind of Leelas, and the Poganda Leela, like Dainukasur, and the moving through the, the whole Poganda Leela is given in Bhagavatam there in short, in brief, in summary. Hmm? Then turns into Kishore Leela at the end of the killing of Dainukasur. All, the, all these beautiful Leela, there, Brahmas, Haridas come through Nam, absorbed in the, And what does this constitute? Krishna said, I will now show you my name, uh, give you my, my, my rupa. I will reveal to you my rupa, my form my qualities, my leelas. In one sense it means I will reveal to you everything about me, all my colors, my white, when I come in a white form, when I come in a b- black form, when I come in a, in, in a golden form as Chaitanya, hmm? in a red form, in Kali Yuga, in Dwapa Yuga, in Satya Yuga, in Treta Yuga. In other words, know my leela avatars. Hmm? Hmm? Or excuse me, no, my 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 my, my yuga avatars, and the implications, and my lila avatars, and my guna avatars. Hmm? All these things you will know. Hmm? Why you will know all these things? Hmm? He says, because you will know everything about me, because you will come to know me as Swami Bhagavan. Yavana ham. Hmm? Yavana ham. Yatabhava. You will know me, Jiva Goswami says, you will know me 
you will be able to measure me. Hmm? Maya means to measure. You know, we could try to measure things and you know, bring them in our grasp, but we can't. And Krishna says, "You will be able to measure me. Hmm? You will know if you you're going to become a Gaudiya Vaishnava. Your sampradaya will become the sampradaya that I take manifest in as Chaitanya, and you will come as Brahma Hari Das. And we, and, and, and in this sampradaya, people, uh, the, the devotees, they come to know me as Swayam Bhagavan, as I am. That means they know everything else about me." My Lila Avatar, my Guna, you don't find this anywhere else, in other words. This is in, in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. You, people say, yes, my Guru is Avatar of Krishna. We say, which one is he? Which kind? Is he Lila Avatar, a Guna Avatar, a Munvantara Avatar, hmm? a Yuga Avatar? Hmm? And they go, uh. <laughs> say, Next. <laughs> no. Hmm? Krishna, Swayam Bhagavan, hmm? who knows him, knows all these other manifestations. Rupa Goswami, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught Sanatana Goswami, all these things. And you go through all these details. What is Lagu Bhagavatamrita? Hmm? Rupa, Gos- Rupa Goswami writing Lagu Bhagavatamrita. All these different manifestations of, the, of, 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 of divinity, uh, of Sri Krishna. Uh, so many, in it, so many details. And you think, man, this is like, <laughs> how do they know all this? <laughs> So many different nuanced manifestations of their deity. They know about them all because they know him completely. Hmm? That's what it means to know Swayam Bhagavan. It's the end of knowing. And what kind of knowledge is there? He's in saying to you, Okay, Brahma, I'm going to reveal to you my Saguna Brahman form, which is just really kind of here today and gone tomorrow as a tool hmm? so that you can know my formless self and... Nothing more to be said. <laughs> next, next question. You asked about my form. There's not really much to talk about. Hmm? It's a temporary manifestation of Saguna Brahman, and ultimately I'm near Guna Brahman, and there's nothing to be said about that. There's no Guna to it. There's no Leela to it. It has nothing to do. There's no, there's no form to it. No, he says, Guna, Rupa, Leela, I'm going to show you everything about me. Hmm? And when he says, I'm going to, you're going to be able to measure me, hmm? Means you're going to be know me as Swayam Bhagawan, hmm? medium size. Hmm? Hmm? Means you're going to know that when I when I turn from my Poganda Lila, from the Sage Poganda, the end of the Poganda Lila, when I start to turn to my Kishore Lila, you're going to know that that's when hairs start to grow on my chest. <laughs> hmm? These kind of things. Hmm? That's when when when. My eyes start to become reddish around them, and in my pogonda, when I manifest in my pogonda lila, hmm, that's when my my hands start to show some reddish and in in, uh, redness in my feet, and hmm, and there's certain lines, some lines start to form around my neck, like on a conch shell. All these kind of things you're going to know in such detail. Who knows this? Hmm? Only follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knows this about Krishna. You don't find this kind of information anywhere else. In Bhakti Rasamrita, you find this. You don't find it in the Bhagavatam in such detail. Hmm? Rupa Goswami is giving all this. He was empowered by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to give all these details. This is Yavanam. You're going to know everything about me. I mean, everything. Hmm? Every nuance about me, every detail about me. Hmm? And, and, and there's a way for knowing that, and that is Gaudiya Sampradaya. Hmm? And that means you can know me as a, as as in, in Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, Madhurja. Hmm? And in all you can know my intentions, Yathaba. Hmm? My variant and and follow them. I'll be under your control, it means. Hmm? All this I'm giving to you, Brahma. This is your prospect. This could come before you with my darshan. Take it is my mercy. Hmm? And now he said, the implication. I'll explain in some detail so, some of the about about myself about some. This is part of some bandha, of course, about the form of Krishna hmm? and other things, the Abhideya, the so on. And we discussed them it's, uh, and Prayojan in some detail. But now he's going to the next class begin his Ahomeva Samevagre. You go on this point again. It's a very strong emphasis here 
among other things, beautiful things, a very strong emphasis against Advaita. This is one of the hubs around which the Bhagavatam orbits. The trance of Vyas is another one in the seventh chapter of the first canto. The Krishna's two Bhagavan line of one verse of, is, is another hub around which the book moves. These four verses are another one. And if you understand, we understand this book is not about Brahman. Hmm? This is not about some saguna manifestation of, of, of Brahman that's, that's provisional and getting beyond it, I'll enter into the formless, qualityless, activityless, um, whatever it is, <laughs> uh, un, un, ineffableness <laughs> uh, of, of, of ultimate reality. No, this idea is being is cra- crashed down upon here. Hmm? He doesn't say, and I'll show you all these things, and after showing you all these things, then I'll show you my formlessness. Hmm? There's, no, there's no hint of that whatsoever. Hmm? That Indeed, that formless manifestation of, of the Absolute is, isn't even mentioned here. Hmm? There's no mention of it. There's no discussion. When Jiva Goswami wrote his Satsandarvas, he has a, he has a Bhagavat Sandarbha hmm? about Bhagwan. He has a Paramatma Sandarbha hmm? about the Paramatma aspect. He has a Krishna Sandarbha about the Swayam Bhagwan. Mm-hmm. Fountainhead of of, of 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 all manifestations of Bhagwan and and uh, and, and Paramatma. Hmm? What am I pointing out? He doesn't have a Brahma uh, Sandarbha. There's no Brahma Sandarbha. We're going to have a Sandarbha now about Brahman. There's nothing to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> what do we say about that? Hmm? It, it's there. Some Ganis with a little Bhakti again merge in that to some extent. Hmm? Not like Shankar is talking about. That is not accepted by the Goswamis or by Bhagavatam. But it, it's, it's not something very desirable from the Bhagavatam. What to speak, even Shantaras is not very desirable. Fortunately, it can change by good association. You can become a Dasya Bhakta or a Sakya Bhakta. Hmm? And Shantaras is so far beyond Brahman realization. Hmm? So this is even the topic. The only reason it's a topic is some people are want to want to make it uh, bhakti subordinate to it, and and all these things that Bhagwan is going to reveal about himself to Brahma all subordinate to that to, to nothing. Hmm? All of this charming, wonderful features of Bhagwan all coming out of emptiness. No. Rather the other way. Yasya Prabhu. But Yasya Prabhu. Prabhupada Jagadanda Kuti. This formlessness is his aura, his halo. Hmm? And in that halo, so many planets of Vaikuntam are floating. And, hmm? and just outside of that <laughs> is the material world and all this Brahma's work. And from here we can go there to Golok, to the form of Bhagavan. So. Brahmanohi Pratishta, as he says in the Gita. That Brahman, that's subordinate to me. Hmm? So he's making that point here as well, very, very, very strongly in a very compelling way. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Jidaya. Any question? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course, they'll manifest through kirtan. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we are all instructed to do a job as well. Yes. Yeah, practice. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In Kali Yuga, everything is prefaced by Nam. So every Nam kirtan is given, given uh, preference. All forms of bhakti are accompanied with that to one extent or another. But, yeah, Vaishnava Seva, hmm? all ability to, ability to take advantage of Nam will come from all these things. Nam is Krishna. Hmm? 
Vaishnava Seva, you will realize Krishna. But we, by everything we do, but Nam Kirtan is nonetheless given that, an emphasis. And Nam Smaranam is the ability to do Nam Smaranam should come from Nam Kirtan. Hmm? Also, Smaranam, Smaranam, Kirtana Prabhavi, Smarana Subhavi. This is a nice poem, part of a poem of Bhakti Siddhanta. From the power of Kirtan, Smaranam will be possible. In other words, the mind. The thing about Kirtan, as I said before, is you, you could do Kirtan, your mind could be somewhere else. So when you do that kind of kirtan, then all those things won't come. <laughs> but when the kirtan is, is focused and the mind is captured, then smarnam becomes kind of an aspect of kirtan. It, it, it follows the kirtan. Hmm? The mind is arrested. Hmm? And when the mind is arrested by the kirtan, smarnam is going on in conjunction with kirtan. And this is actually the way of rag bhakti. Rag bhakti is much about smarnam, but by the force of kirtan and energized by kirtan. Hmm? So, Smarnam will be done simultaneous with Kirtan. It's almost, at, almost as if it as, at, comes out of the Kirtan. Hmm? But so we it, our, uh, then you measure your, you know, your, your participation in Kirtan and the efficacy of it by how well you can sit and do Nam Smarnam. Hmm? Something like that. Another question? Yes. So explain in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu when Shantaras is explained that Shantaras is a neutral ras and um, and if a Shantaras Bhakta has association of a Dasya Bhakta or a Sakya Bhakta, then he can go from Shantaras to that Rasa by association. But it doesn't but Sakiras, Dasya Ras, these are stai is really a stai in a more, you know, dominant it is there's stai bhav, but it's not. A, it doesn't have the same power as, as just like just neutrality does not have the same power and force as serv, servitude, friendship. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm here, but I'm 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 not. I mean, it's like I'm on the fence. I'm leaning in your direction. I'm you know something like that, but I'm not in the pasture entirely. Or I'm looking at the grass, but I'm not eating it. Something like that. Yeah. If you have, if by if you have bhakti mixed with jnana, hmm, then you can get shantarasa. If you have jnana mixed with bhakti, then you won't. Then you'll get brahman realization. But if you have bhakti mixed with jnana, you can get shantarasa. There are many examples. Shantarasa has no interest in lila. Also, this is another characteristic of it. Leela is not interesting to them. Hmm? Yes? I think I remember from the Saiba Dharma description like uh, the devotees uh, uh, Krishna Leela who are kind of Shantarasa and Shantarasa when they are with proper boys they behave like this is another thing. In this explanation of Shantarasa, there are two aspects of Shantarasa that aren't quite Shantarasa. Hmm? One is where the object is not fixed, and one is where the sentiment is not fixed. I forget the technical names. Hmm? So, Sometimes he feels attraction for Sakura. Sometimes uh, Madhurya. Sometimes, uh, uh, because that is not fixed, it can't come to actual Shantarasa. Hmm? Hmm? And uh, so how does it work? <laughs> the, uh, either the... Uh, hmm, hmm, the two sides, the, fe- the feeling or the object, hmm? the sentiment or the object, is fluctuating. Hmm. So these are kind of like precursor to to Shantarasa. Hmm. That's not Shantarasa proper, according to Bhaktarasaramita Sindhu. Come to Shantarasa proper, then 
then there's uh, then it, you're fixed and you're tasting Shantaras, not going to different rasas. It's not that somebody in Shantarasa tastes all the rasas. Before Shantarasa, he may have some attraction and some feeling for them, hmm? but not a stai bow for them. Hmm? He doesn't have the stai bow for them. Hmm? But he may have attraction for them. That's the kind of... It's all in, all in the Shantaras chapter. Hmm? Dealing with Shantarasa. You can study that. Hmm? Not Shantarasa proper. Hmm? That's why it's changing. Because it's not stai. Hmm? It's changing. They, they, have, they, like, they associate with these devotees. I like that Saki Rasa. I associate with these devotees and these. I like the Madhuri Rasa. Hmm? Doesn't have stai. Not even Shantarasa. It's a good thing to have that attraction and some feeling. But the stai, the Baba. But the feeling has not developed. The, the stai, excuse me, the stai has not developed. That's yeah, has to be cultivated and so forth. Hmm? And then if he comes to Shant, so there's some progression in those. And you come to Shantaras, and still there's possibility of progression. And by association, so you get your destiny: Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, Madhurya. Anything else? It's possible, certainly, yeah. Hmm. But they're not sitting up there just checking us out. Hmm. We, you know, they, they, some of the devotees have the, the, the my guru has passed away. He's preoccupied up there with the movement, making sure that you know he's making this arrangement and that arrangement. So, you know, he's in the leela. Hmm. But he can hear the, the prayers of those who say they're really screwing up your movement. <laughs> <laughs> Help! <laughs> Something like that. Hmm. Okay. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam Gijai. Aoji Gopal Gijai. Old Bhakti Brindu.